Um, great. We don't have a clear. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There it is. Here we go. Great. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Sorry about that. Um, well, good morning. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm not sure if the organizers really realized uh, when they were putting these two sessions back to back that they were going to hear from two completely opposite people uh, with completely, I would say, diametrically opposed worldviews in almost every single respect. Uh, I was uh, very surprised and astonished to hear the ranting against uh, Ayn Rand and objectivism because if you really want to understand my work, you have to understand that it purely comes from Ayn Rand and objectivism. So I'm not sure if our previous speaker was merely uh, ignorant or actually anti-reason, anti-science, anti-progress, but um, here we are and I'm going to give you a very different view of the world. So um, what I'm going to talk about today, and I understand I have to click several times because I screwed up my slides. Well, does this work at all? It seems to be... Oh, doing something. There we go. Great. So uh, Wikipedia. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Wikipedia uh, first uh, and about the business model. I'm going to talk about Wikia and our business model. And I'm going to talk about some of the, uh, the conditions that make these things possible uh, and how uh, we've leveraged uh, the ideas from the open source software world uh, to create projects that really engage and involve uh, millions of people uh, in working actually for the common good. Uh, so at Wikipedia today, we have over 400 million uh, visitors every month uh, from all around the world. We have uh, over 200 languages. Uh, sometimes you'll hear the number 270. Uh, 270 is the number of languages that we have uh, which are, um, exist, but there's only about 200 of them uh, which have at least 1,000 articles in that language. And even 1,000 is quite a small encyclopedia, but that's the point where I begin to uh, think, okay, well, we've got a small community. Uh, they're starting to work together, starting to think about how they can find some friends to help them with the project uh, and, and uh, begin to do outreach and that sort of thing. So many millions of people have contributed to Wikipedia, although it's important to understand there is a core community. Uh, the core community of Wikipedia um, in every language will consist of a few hundred or a few thousand people who are the people who really monitor Wikipedia, who really work very hard uh, to realize the ideals of Wikipedia. Uh, so now we're the fifth most popular website in the world, um, which is really quite a remarkable and astounding accomplishment, uh, particularly when you consider how small the organization is, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. Wikia is a separate organization, completely separate. This is my other project, um, and 46 million monthly visitors. So, uh, you know, we've just passed being one-tenth the size of Wikipedia, so still uh, fairly small. However, this would be uh, bigger than most of the famous uh, websites that you would have heard of, uh, bigger than the New York Times and so forth like that. Um, we're in over 100 languages, uh, and millions of people have contributed. Now, the interesting thing here is that unlike Wikipedia, uh, Wikia is, uh, is not an encyclopedia. It's basically the rest of the library, and people come together and they create things, whatever they're interested in. We've had some really interesting and amazing projects uh, come together, and these are advertising-supported wikis. So the business model uh, is completely different, but they uh, share something. So now we're the 50th most popular website. Uh, that's according to Quantcast. So the business model of Wikipedia is uh, really uh, something quite interesting. Uh, we are a charity. Uh, so Wikipedia is a nonprofit organization. We exist primarily from donations from the general public. Uh, people always are very interested to know how do we get the money to keep Wikipedia on the air. Um, our budget uh, in the current year is about $20 million, um, which if you look at the budgets of the other top uh, 30 websites or the top 10 websites, uh, you realize it's just a tiny speck of money. It's a really uh, incredibly efficient project. Um, and it's owned and operated by the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the charity that I set up. Uh, and the Wikimedia Foundation has a number of uh, projects. Uh, in addition to Wikipedia, there's Wiktionary, which is a dictionary project, Wikibooks, an effort to create free textbooks uh, for everywhere in the world. Uh, Wiki News, which is a, an attempt to do journalism, and I'll talk a little bit more about journalism later in my talk. And we're in a strong financial position. Um, although we don't have a lot of money, uh, we have been very conservative about how we manage the site, uh, very conservative uh, in terms of our budgeting and planning, and our fundraising has been very successful. The public responds very well to our annual call for donations. 
the money that, that from Wikipedia, the vast majority of the money is from the small donors, people donating uh, 20 to $30. We also have some, uh, some larger uh, donors. We have some money from the philanthropic foundations, but really by far the bulk of it is from those small donors. And that's been really important to us. Uh, it's important to us more than any other reason because it gives us independence. We're not dependent on large corporate grants or anything like this. And so the community can follow their own minds about where they want to take the project and how they want to do things. Wikia, a very different business model. Uh, Wikia is a for-profit company, venture capital funded. Uh, we're profitable, not very profitable, but we're profitable and we're hiring and we're expanding the company. And so at, at Wikia, even though uh, we are uh, organized in a different way, the thing that we share with Wikipedia is the concept of free licensing. So many people know about free licensing from the software world. Um, the idea uh, you know, that uh, programmers get together and they give away their software for free. Uh, you can reuse it, modify it, do whatever you want. Well, we've taken that idea and really pushed it um, as far as we can and as hard as we can outside just the world of software. So the idea is that for everything in uh, Wikipedia and Wikia, uh, there's a few exceptions here and there, but they're, they're very, very minor in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, you're, you're free to copy, to modify, uh, to redistribute and redistribute modified versions of all of the work in, in all of these projects. Um, this is really contrary to most people's view, especially 10 years ago, although a lot of minds have been changed by the success of Wikipedia, about how you could become successful uh, in terms of producing information, in terms of producing content. Uh, the, the idea here, uh, what it used to be, is that you wanted to have unique content that no one else had, you wanted to strongly enforce your copyright so that nobody could copy what you're doing, and then you would get huge amounts of traffic. We took the opposite approach and said, look, everything we put up, take it if you want, copy it, do whatever you want with it, you can change it, uh, you can redistribute it, you can do anything. Uh, and this led to you know, massive success. And so it's really, really interesting to think about what are some of the reasons for this and why is it important. So one of the most important reasons is what we call the right to fork. Uh, the right to fork means if you're not happy with what is going on, if you're not happy with what's going on in the project, you're free to take all the content and leave. Uh, we make this as easy as possible for people. Uh, we say, look, first of all, it's under free license, so you can do, do that if you want to. That's perfectly fine. But we even go so far as to make all the database dumps available online to make it really easy. If you want to download a copy and create your own alternative version, uh, you can do that. And in fact, at, at Wikipedia, we've seen many different projects start up. Uh, some of them, I think, are really great, and some of them I uh, think are slightly amusing. Um, one of my favorite to go and take a look at for humor value is the Conservapedia, uh, where you can read... Uh, long essay, one of my favorite essays uh, on Conservapedia is uh, if you go and compare the Wikipedia entry on Kangaroo uh, to the Wikipedia entry on, on Conservapedia, um, which explains to you how the kangaroos hopped from, the, from Noah's Ark to, uh, uh, to Australia. It's quite amusing, but um, uh, this idea of the right to fork is incredibly powerful. At Wikia, the for-profit business, it has a very interesting and a very powerful incentive. We have had several projects at Wikia who decided they didn't like the policies of the site and they forked and they left. They took the software, they took the, um, they took the, um, the content, and they, and they left and they set up their own alternative site. Um, why did they do that? Well, in some cases, they didn't, they didn't like a redesign of the site. We, we released new software features and they said, we hate these new software features. We want you to turn them off. So sometimes we turn them off, sometimes we don't. And if, if we don't, they either uh, decide they like them or they leave. And what's really powerful about this is that for the company, it means that the company is in the position of providing a platform for people to express themselves. We don't control the content, and we don't control the people who are writing it. This gives them a certain type of independence that's very, very powerful. Of course, as a company, it's quite constraining in certain ways. Um, if we were a different type of company, we might say, oh, no, we're not going to give you the software, and you don't have the right to take the content. So if you want to go start over from scratch, you can. Our belief is we build stronger communities, we build stronger works, um, as long as people do have that right to fork. If they have the right to leave, it forces us to treat them well, and that's really, really important to us. Another element of uh, free licensing, and not all free licenses are of this form, is copyleft. Uh, so the, ad the idea of copyleft, so free licensing means you can copy, modify, redistribute, redistribute, modify versions. You can do all that commercially or non-commercially. Copyleft is an added requirement to say, look, if you're going to take this and reuse it, 
You also must reuse it under the same license. You must also make the work available for free. This has been incredibly empowering in the software movement. What it means is you have very difficult incentive problems when you say, okay, let's get together 10 programmers who are interested in this problem and let's write software together and give it away for free. There's always this sort of fear like, okay, but what if two or three of the, the programmers decide they're going to take a version and go off and start a company and make it proprietary and then they won't share their improvements to our code. So what Copyleft does is it, it really puts in the legal framework to say, look, we're all going to contribute to the common good and we will all always be able to draw from the common good. And that kind of sharing really solves a huge number of incentive problems that really allows people to work together. It creates an ecosystem. Uh, where there are lots of people who are contributing to things and using things, uh, but by the very requirements of that ecosystem, they're all required to give back to the common uh, group. Um, it turns out that non-copyleft licenses can survive alongside copyleft licenses. So uh, there is some uh, dispute uh, within the free software and the free culture movement as to how important copyleft really is. My view is Copyleft is extremely important because it creates that ecosystem. And once you have that ecosystem created, yes, not every project needs to be copyleft. So there are certain uh, programs, uh, quite famous and quite important, where you can take that from the common, from the, from the public domain, um, and you can modify it yourself, and you can say, I'm not going to give my changes back to anybody, and I'm going to sell proprietary software from that. Mostly that doesn't happen, but I think the main reason that mostly doesn't happen is because there is this huge ecosystem of people trying to do interesting things. So what's interesting, and I've alluded to this in particular with respect to Wikia, but is the separation of money and cre creativity, and why does that matter uh, in this context? So two nights ago, I was in Moscow, and a magazine asked me a very strange question about bribery. Uh, so let's, I wanted us to all think about that for a second. He said to me, uh, talking about Wikipedia and the opening editing model, um, he's like, well, why don't I just um, you know, pay somebody, uh, one of the Wikipedia editors, to change something and delete criticism of my company? Uh, he wasn't talking about his company in particular, but just he's giving the hypothetical. And I said, well, look, that might actually work if it's talking about your magazine, because your magazine is run in a top-down, authoritarian fashion, <clears throat> perfectly good magazine. Um, however, if you bribe the right people and it... Sometimes it's not a bribe. Sometimes it's a very nice advertising contract, um, and we don't call it a bribe. Um, or you buy, bribe a reporter, or you, you do whatever. That's it. You're done. You've succeeded, and you've changed the media. And believe me, in Moscow, this is a, a live issue. Um, whereas, how could you bribe someone to fix Wikipedia for you? It doesn't make any sense, because anyone, everyone, the entire community can come to this entry and say, wait a minute, who just took out all the criticism? That needs to be in there in an open dialogue and discussion. You can't bribe every single person in the world. You can't possibly use money to impact what's in Wikipedia. It just doesn't work. And a few times when people have tried, not by bribing people, I've never actually heard of a case of that. I think people know how stupid that is. But in the case of uh, people trying from a corporate level or from an organizational level to come in and be abusive to Wikipedia, they very quickly get banned, they very quickly get called out, and very often they get embarrassed because uh, it becomes a pu public issue as they've tried to manipulate Wikipedia and fail. I don't know how many stories of politicians there are who made a certain minor career problem much worse when all of a sudden there's a big scandal about how they tried to, uh, to inappropriately behave on Wikipedia. Um, so one of the questions here is, how do we get quality? And why, so again, money and, and creativity, separating the two, how does it work to create quality? Well, there's a couple of ways to get, get quality. Uh, you, can pay, you can pay good money to people who don't have a lot of particular uh, personal interest in a topic. This is the model of traditional journalism, and in fact, it does work quite well. You pay a very good quality writer from a, a well-trained journalism school. Uh, you make sure they don't have any internal conflicts about the issue, and they're just going to write objectively about it. It generally works very well, but of course that model, as we all know, has certain inherent pressures. It has the inherent pressure that, of course, the owner of the newspaper is concerned about what the advertisers think, uh, that, the, uh, that the author may become too close to the subject and then end up getting a job at the subject. And all, all of these kinds of things can happen and do happen. The other way that you can get to quality is through passion, community, and norms. So, for example, the people in Wikipedia, the core contributors, are incredibly passionate about the core values of the site, which are neutrality, quality, uh, comprehensiveness, uh, good references, good sources. That passion uh, is monitored and um, supervised by community. So everyone in the community has a voice. Everyone has the ability to go to any article at any time and say, hey, look, um, 
this article says all of these horrible things about this person. It doesn't cite any sources. We need to fix that. Um, and someone else will say, oh, but it's all true. But I can find sources. Then we get into a dialogue. Okay, what's true? What isn't? Uh, what you find in Wikipedia is that the community pressure for quality means that we have incredibly intense dialogues, discussions, debates about exact wording of how to make things as good as they possibly can be. And so these norms, these norms for quality um, and the passion for quality really drive very high quality writing. When we look at Wikia, which is the for-profit site, we see these astounding sites that people have built where they've done incredible amounts of very passionate work on a topic that they're interested in. Um, one of my favorite is uh, one that happened recently in Germany. The uh, defense minister ended up having to resign uh, because of a huge scandal about plagiarism in his dissertation. Um, well, this started when a group of people got together on a wiki uh, and, and documented the plagiarism they found and invited the public to look for more. Um, and there was a huge spike in traffic, and this uh, wiki went from uh, zero page views to over a million page views a day um, as the media in Germany began covering it, and more and more people came in looking for plagiarism and finding it. They found, according to their numbers, which I can't verify because mein Deutsch is sehr schlecht, my German is very bad, 68% um, of the pages of his dissertation had plagiarism. Uh, so it was, it was quite a fiasco and quite a scandal as well uh, for the university because uh, why did they end up approving a dissertation like this? Um, this just happened because a group of people were very passionate about it. Top-down journalism could in theory do the same thing uh, but typically doesn't. Uh, we don't get nearly enough investigative reporting, investigative journalism uh, for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, so other businesses, what is the impact of these kinds of ideas on other businesses? And I think there's a, uh, you know, I could speak for a very long period of time about this. Uh, one of the most obvious uh, areas for exploration is in journalism itself. And we've had a few um, experimental uh, things in this area. At Wikipedia, at the Wikimedia Foundation, we have our Wiki News Project, um, which is moderately successful. However, the problem uh, with Wiki News has always been that because Wikipedia is this massive, huge uh, success, the foundation has to focus so much of its resources just on keeping Wikipedia on the air, managing Wikipedia, managing everything that goes on with Wikipedia, that in my view, I will be critical of our own organization. We've never devoted sufficient resources to the Wiki News community, uh, so the software is not optimal for writing news. Uh, they don't get the press uh, support. They don't get the, uh, you know, we, we do very little to help them get access to uh, interviews and things like that. So I think there's an opportunity. I don't think we're going to change in that regard. I sort of wish we could, but honestly, we're very, very busy. We see things like the Huffington Post, but the Huffington Post doesn't use free licensing. Uh, so it, it is interesting because it does have a large component of anyone can come and contribute and participate. And so it's moved a step towards participatory journalism. But without that free licensing model, without that idea of community in the same way, I don't think they're going to get to the same level. Uh, I think they're doing some things that are very interesting, but uh, I don't think that they... Um, quite get it in the same way. Uh, moving far outside of that, one of the interesting things that we see, uh, and this is, a, 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 there's a, I wish I knew enough about it to tell you all about it, but I can point you to it. Uh, some people at Nike and some of the other big companies who are interested in, in green issues, perhaps as a fig leaf, I'm, I'm not going to be critical or question it, but they are, they are concerned about sustainability and they have themselves created certain patents. Um, and their view is, some of these patents that they've created don't necessarily provide them a business and marketing advantage. And in fact, they would be better off simply sharing the patents. And I think there's a lot of interesting ideas to explore here when we think about, um, actually, I'm going to skip that point for a second. Uh, when we think more broadly about incentives uh, and these ideas of copyleft and the ideas of freedom, because in many cases, if we think very simply that, well, companies really want to control everything, uh, because that makes them the most money. It turns out that may not be true in all cases. And I think there's a lot of room to explore. It's sort of like saying uh, Wikipedia can only be successful if it tries to control everything. No, it actually became successful by letting go of everything. And I think that that concept, a very deep concept, um, has a much broader applicability than people have realized. Uh, the one last point, which I guess is a little bit out of point of that, of that is uh, uh, clothing design. Um, I have a friend who's uh, getting involved in a startup. She's a, a, a well-known person from the fashion industry who worked in a very traditional role, uh, built a big brand, um, but now feels that the old models really don't make sense and, in fact, is really interested in exploring how can they create a platform so that people can 
do different designs for clothing, whatever they may want to do. But the important thing, in my view, is that if that community proceeds using free licenses and the spirit of community, they may be very successful. And if they don't, they may just be uh, yet another small website that never quite gets anywhere. So those are some of my ideas for this morning, and I'm looking forward to questions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>